Hey, everybody on YouTube, thanks for being here. If you found us, you finally found it, the Paid Search Podcast, a podcast about specifically Google Ads, Google Ads Advertising, Google Ads Management. You've been looking around, you've been clicking around, you got a little blue because you didn't see what, you didn't like what you saw out there. Nothing really gave you the great information. I'm telling you, when you see our content, you're going to be blown away. Mm. Subscribe to the channel, do what a lot of people are doing, like the videos. Thank you for being here, and we're going to give you a beautiful Q&A episode now, and YouTube people specifically, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments, paidsearchpodcast.com contact page, and we'll answer them on an upcoming Q&A episode. Chris, you ready to do the audio? I've been ready. You ready to go on audio, as I say sometimes? Mm-hmm. I am. Okay. Jimmy. Yes, I just wanted to come up here with a cup of tapioca and thank you for treating your stepfather and his extended family with respect over the Thanksgiving holiday. I know it's not easy for you, but it's not easy for him. It's a new situation for all of us, but I thank you for understanding and being a respectful young man. Yeah, no problem. Can I, can I get that tapioca now, please? Yes. <laughs> I think that one might be my favorite. I think I gotta I'm sorry, do your intro. <laughs> hey everyone. Yes, welcome back to the Paid Search Podcast. My name is Jason Rothman. As always, I'm joined this post Thanksgiving week by the great Chris Schaefer. Chris, how was your Thanksgiving? Oh, it was amazing. Jason, I um, I decided to fast for one week and, uh, I look amazing. I feel amazing. Um, and, uh, I'm just going to continue to fast, uh, through December and maybe all of 2020. Do, you know what Chris, they say? How were, how were you no as a, how were you as a teenager? Speaking of family, speaking of teenagers, speaking of Thanksgiving, were you a well-behaved young man? Oh, Jason, I have always been a rule follower um, and probably always will be. Um, yes, I incredibly well behaved. Uh, my sister was the terror of the family and I wow. was uh, successful um, in all of my studies, successful in my many girlfriends and uh, <laughs> successful in my French horn studies, which I um, excelled in and uh, amazing. Really just well, I was, phenomenal, um... amazing. I was in the bell choir. Oh wow! In uh, seventh and eighth grade, and uh, I was uh, I was mostly a, a well-behaved young man. I I was very just let me do my thing. I'm not going to bother you. Mm -hmm. You've laid out the rules. I will figure out every little angle I can, but I will not break the rules. And just please, just leave me alone and let me do my thing and <laughs> sit in <laughs> the back of class bells. and <laughs> let me play my bells. Just let me play my bells. <laughs> um. But yeah. Well, I played the guitar last week, so we're gonna get some bell action. No, today. because I don't, I don't have my I don't have my gloves, and you can't play uh, bell choir without the gloves. Without gloves, yeah. Chris, let me ask you a question. You, you had these? Was it four high school girlfriends? I uncountable. I mean, there's no one knows who broke it up with who. Did you break any hearts? Hmm. Did you get your heart broken? Because I I knew some guys in high school, Chris. They did what you did. They dated the older girl. Mm -hmm. They got ruined for a decade off of that breakup. For a decade. For a decade. Wow. Like, um, they got ruined. It was very I, emotional. The older, the older girl, she just stopped talking to me. Like that. <laughs> wow. So we never were official. It was just kind of like, I think I was like a side guy before there was <laughs> side guys, you know? <laughs> You are a I perfect like side keep... guy. You're just going on your way. <laughs> you're going to CrossFit. You're happy. You're eating your food after CrossFit. Your little tuna sandwich. You're like, ooh, I think I have a girlfriend. <laughs> uh, but maybe not. But I don't care. I'm going to play my video games. Now. I really like the way my day goes each day. If she calls me back, she calls me back. That's how I see you actually. Side guy. Yeah. yeah. Side guy. <laughs> my side guy. I'm going to start calling you that. All right. That's all I needed. <laughs> That's all I needed. I got some gold for the show. My side guy. Oh, As always, man. I'm joined by my side guy, Chris Schaefer. 
<laughs> Excellent. I'm so glad I supplied that for you. Okay. Well, let me talk about my sidekick and partner in Google ads that I appreciate. OPTEO.com slash PSP pronounced Optio is a wonderful tool that can help you excel in your Google ads, whether you are managing it yourself or you're managing it for multiple clients like Jason and I, we have many clients and we use tools like Optio to get things done. And we like Optio a lot because it provides email alerts. It provides an interactive, colorful, uh, very uh, informational interface to give us information about our campaigns in ways that we may not have otherwise understood. You want to look at the clicks over time. You want to provide some really cool looking reports uh, that you could take a screenshot and pop into, a, um, pop into an email. Lots of stuff like that. Lots of cool stuff that you'll love. You can get a six week extended trial and try it out for free. This is for our listeners. OPTEO.com slash PSP. Hit them up in the chat. Say, hey, I'm a listener of the show. Can I get a six week extended trial? They'll say, sure. Here you go. Done, done. You'll love it. Thanks for checking them out, Jason. Thanks, Chris. And I want to thank Directive Consulting, directiveconsulting.com. Directive Consulting specializes in digital marketing for enterprise and B2B advertisers. There's all kinds of different advertising going on on Google Ads, SEO, Facebook, all that kind of stuff. There's tons of different kinds of advertisers, small business, medium-sized businesses, the different kinds of businesses, but it really is different in terms of management and skill level and what an agency can do for you when you're running at an enterprise and B2B level. So if you run those kind of campaigns, I recommend go, going to directiveconsulting.com. They do it all. SEO, pay-per-click, conversion rate optimization, landing pages, content, social media, digital PR. They do it all. They figure out what gets the highest quality leads and then they help you scale that program. Look at their case studies on their website. Look for the look at uh, the big names they've worked with. Look at their content, um, and most importantly, get a free custom proposal at directiveconsulting.com. As we did last week, we have answers to your questions. And Jason, I have great news. We are going international again. We have a plethora of people from around the world that I've never been to uh, pretty much anywhere around the world. I've never been to. Um, I'm a very untraveled person as you are Jason. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, today we get to visit some of those places and hear from people, even some of their beautiful accents. So you guys stay tuned here. Um, Jason, you ready to jump in with uh, the first question? Yep. So Ilias from Athens, Greece says, very, very straightforward here. Uh, what is the optimal number of ad groups per campaign and keywords per ad group? I, it's a great question. Um, I have two points that I'm going to make. And then Jason, please fill in the places that I missed. But I'm going to start with the ad group question. How many optimal ad groups are there? Um, I have a particular issue with that question because there is no optimal number of ad groups. There's no such thing. Um, you can have a successful campaign and I have them. I have a ton of them. They're everywhere. You've never seen a better campaign than what you see on my screen. Every one of them. And some of them have one ad group. Some of them have two. Some of them have 20. Mm -hmm. And the number of ad groups is not related to the success of the campaign. Okay. Now, now that I've said that, um, the next part of your question is how many keywords per ad group? That I think is important. I think that there is an optimal number and I've quoted it before. I've said it before. In fact, it's, I mean, you could go back to uh, like episode three, four. I mean, we probably talked about it back then. I mean, I, I've always said this one number. Um, it's not a number that is documented anywhere. It's just a number from my experience and people like 
solid advice. So I give solid answers. And my answer is 30. I, I like 30. I think 30 is the max number, but 10 is fine. 20 is fine. 40, 50, 60. I start to have a problem and you say, okay, why 30? Cause that's the initial, that's the next way you're going to have to go. You're going to say, okay, thanks for the answer. Now explain why you chose that. The answer is this, the num the reason I like 30 is because if you start going past 30, you start to deviate from the actual, uh, uh, topic or theme of that ad group. Let me explain. Every ad group has a set of ads in it and those ads speak to that issue, that symptom, that problem that the person is searching about. Okay. They're looking for something, looking for a service, they're looking for a product. And those ads speak to that. If you have 60, if you have a hundred, if you have 200 keywords, you've probably gone past that theme symptom. There's probably something inside of those that you could pull out and break those into separate ad groups and have more specific ad copy based on the symptom, the theme, the problem, the solution that the person is looking for. So that's why I pick 30 because it's usually hard to go past 30 and maintain that theme. And you say, well, no, not if I change the keyword around 50 different ways, I could have 50 keywords. And then the final thought there is, why are you, why do you have so many keywords? You're only getting clicks on 5% of them. You don't need the other 200, even though they all fit the same theme, you're only getting clicked right. on 2% of them. You don't need that. So um, they're not doing anything for you. They're not helping. They have low search volume. So that's it. That's my very thorough, long answer to a very short, precise question. Yeah, Chris, I, I agree. I think uh, how many ad groups you have is how many um, fit inside of uh, one campaign with the settings, how many services, how many themes. And so that kind of depends on the advertiser. And then what's the number of right keywords? I would agree with you. Most of the time, it's I wouldn't put a minimum on it. You can be fine yeah, with one or no, two. No, no, no. You can be fine with yeah. five or six. But I would say once you start hitting 20 to 30, then you're probably asking yourself what you're doing. However, I just looked inside uh, one of my most successful campaigns, 590 keywords in one ad group. Wow. Here's the kicker though, Chris. I have a reason why I'm that high. I have a reason okay. why I'm past 30. The reason is, is because I have just implemented a loose broad match modified strategy. Volume is down. The market has gotten more competitive. The cost per clicks are up. Uh, the uh, cost per conversion is up and we need to get things right again. And so with this account, and I've talked about it in the past, uh, I had some broad match modified issues and things were coming in too loose. So I shut down the broad match modified, but then things are getting too expensive. So I'm going to reopen a significant amount of broad ma match modified keywords. This just happened to be the ad group that I threw a bunch in just two days ago. And so I'm running it and seeing where the volume's coming in, what keywords it's coming in on. And then I might prune that down or move things around eventually. But my point is there's nothing wrong with having hundreds of keywords inside of one ad group, as long as they all fit the ad, as long as they all fit the theme, and as long as you have a reason why you're doing it. And in this case, I'm trying out a bunch of new BMM, broad match modified. But in general, I, right. like the, I like the 30 keyword threshold. That's a good, good uh, in general thing. Thanks for sending it in. All right, now we're going to, Jason, don't yes. jump on the boat yet. Don't jump on your plane. We're going to go, we're going to stay over across the ocean. And now we're going to go to Scotland. We have Philip from Scotland who has a question that he has sent over the air into the dataverse on my phone. Hi, Chris. Hi, Jason. This is Philip calling from Scotland. I've been listening to some of your shows on YouTube and I have a question regarding location-based keywords. I have a business that does business all over the UK, but often I see search terms where people think they need my type of business near them. So I'm in Scotland and I see search terms that say, such and such in London or near Oxford. Now, I don't want to build a website with a page for every city in the UK. Is it doing damage or is it, is it hurting my ad 
as performance if I if I um, add those city specific keyword searches to my to my ad groups. So um, I pop up, but I'm not immediately local. So is that a contradiction? So is that bad news? Look forward to hearing what you have to say about it. Cheers, guys. Keep it up. Bye. All right. And Jason. Thank you for the question, Philip. Uh, it's a good question. Um, Scotland's a place I'd love to love to visit. Um, sounds like a beautiful, mm-hmm. beautiful place. Um, Chris, this the answer is obvious. The answer is I don't know. The answer is I don't know. The so I. <laughs> I'm just messing with you, Chris. So <laughs> you're killing me. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. So the answer is I don't know because I could go either way on this. If someone's searching for a specific service, uh, we're going to use. It's so hard to come up with a term um, because I'm so focused on local things. But let's say uh, yes, you do business all over the UK. <laughs> someone searches for specifically London for that service, but you do service London and people in London, but you're not running. You don't have those pages on your website. Um, does that person doing the search for your service and the word London in it or other cities uh, you don't have pages for uh, when they're looking for those specific cities, are they going to be good traffic or not? My, my thought is they could be, I've run into this before where you're like, huh, does someone searching for that term, even though we're located in a different city, but we do business in that city, does that mean they would be turned off by us not being headquartered or located in that city? The answer is, I think it depends. I have had situations where I leave those terms running and and we can still show up when they include, like in this example, the word London in the search. But I have had campaigns and clients where we've added for uh, sticking with this example, the word London as a negative keyword. And we only showed up where people typed in that service and not that service with London. So it depends. I think it depends on your conversion tracking. Um, so you need to know if people searching when they include London, I don't care if, if you're going to have to explain it to them over the phone or on your website or something that you do service London. What I care about is how many of those London clicks turn into leads, turn into conversions. And if it is a lower rate because you don't have a London dedicated page on your site, that's okay. You just need to lower your bid and account for that lower conversion rate and watch your cost per conversion. So to me, it's all about having tracking in place. It's all about letting the data guide you. The one thing I will say in terms of the website or landing pages, you don't need to build out a page for every single city, but you could on your landing page or website, make it very clear that you do service all of the UK with a map, with a list of cities, all on one page. That's a good way to kind of, uh, tell people, Hey, we do do both. And then for your ads that run in London, uh, you could, if you wanted to have ad copy that says we service the London area, you could have call outs or, uh, structured snippets that list out the cities that you do business in. So there's ways you can do it, um, in terms of conveying that data to people that are conveying the information that you do service all the cities around the UK without building out individual landing pages. So that's one aspect. The other aspect is have conversion tracking in place and let the data guide you and let the data tell you if it's a good decision to keep showing up when people search those cities and let the data guide you and tell you, okay, do you need to adjust bids on those or do you need to just block them all together, those terms? What do you think about that, Chris? Jason, I'll tell you what people dislike the most is people that are not definitive people that are in the gray area. Uh, I think that was a great answer. And I'm going to jump straight into a solid answer. Uh, Philip, you can go with this or ignore it, but I'm going to say absolutely not. I'm going to say do Whoa. not put, yeah, Whoa. I know. I'm going to be I'm just, that's so, dude, I, I that's like so, to be that no, guy. No, 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 that's so, that's so, 
so bold. I think that's the word you're looking no. for. So bold and so no, strong. Chris, no, because what if he, what if he's struggling to spend his budget? What if his budget is fifty dollars a day and it's not a super common service and it's a very like niche service and he's only spending twenty dollars a day without those terms and he needs to try to try it and see if he can get leads that day. And another thing you don't know: what if getting one new client pays for his whole year of business? You don't know the situation, okay. bro. Okay. Let me clarify. When I say don't do it, I mean the landing pages. Do not set up the landing pages. Why do you spin me up? You could have said that from the start. <laughs> I agree with that. Don't you don't need the landing pages to make it work? Absolutely. Why do not? Why do the landing would you pages. spin me up like that? <laughs> because you're fun to watch boil. <laughs> Well, you were saying right, something so, that was so out of line. I thought you were yeah, saying definitely know, block those city I names. I thought you knew me well enough to know that, of course, we're together on this, but uh, I guess you didn't feel me out. But well, that's let me, why I was let me explain. Let me explain my solid reasoning on why you should not cross this line. Of, Let's of go the down landing the pages. Of the landing pages. Okay. I'm totally in favor of the keywords, right? That makes sense. Sure. I mean, that would be contradictory to say that you're leaving something on the page by not targeting some geographic area that could get the search and you could right, have try a it out try conversion see see how it yeah. does no yeah. no problem but let's okay. go down the line of philip setting up pages for 20 different uh towns um and, and they pages all mean ad groups or right. ads pages, yeah, mean, ad pages mean ad groups and, yeah. and, and you know what you know what that also means it means making determinations on keywords and ad copy this one ad group has a uh, town a Okay, let's say town A, and it is only for town A. Let's say you go so far as even to add negative keywords to block everything else. Okay. Now you have another one that is town B. And let's say there's a, a situation where someone puts both those words in their ad copy. You just miss the search because you've made definitive definition. They, they, they have to have... Um, uh, they have to either be A or B. They can't be both or they can't be misspelled a certain way because you won't catch it because you have everything else blocked. Um, you know, uh, somebody who services this, but not London, you know, or blah, blah, blah. There's lots of ways they could do that. And mm. you would essentially block your own ability to show them ad copy. You can also um, make mistakes. And, and that's exactly what I was going to say. Now, let's say you don't do the negative keywords and you say, okay, I just won't do the negative keywords, so it won't be a problem. Now, imagine someone does a search, and for some reason they see an ad um, that is not for their um, for their particular area, or you put the wrong ad in uh, with the wrong landing page, and now you're delivering someone to a page that says you service town B, but they're in town A. There's so many things wrong that could work here, and in the end. I'm only interested in ad copy and then sending them to a page Jason described. Send them to a page that says, we service everything here. Take your pick. Yeah. If you're in this area, done. We got it covered. I think that's the only reason. Uh, and by the way, F Philip's got a business to run. He's not <laughs> an, a Google ads nerd like us trying to make it like the most optimal thing. Like if Philip can get his campaign 90% of the way there and get leads and fill up his uh, business and, and, get work from this campaign and not have to spend that much time on it. Getting that last 9%, if he has to spend two hours a day on it, probably not worth it. So I, I'm so, I agree with you. I'm so against the need to build out 30 city pages just off the top. Now that said, Chris, if he notices, he starts getting a ton of traffic from London and he hears from people on the calls. Oh, I didn't know you do London, but I thought I'd call in anyway. If he starts hearing that, mm -hmm. then he can create one page, you know, for London, just one, and not have to create 30, not knowing that the 30th city is not going to get any traffic at all. So let the data guide you, let the business guide you. There is room for this individual page thing at some point, but let, let the data make that decision for you. And you may only end up needing one, or you may find the techniques we talked about uh, get you there anyway. So, yeah. All right, Jason, let's go. Let's let's stay overseas one more time. Yes, Chris, truly an international show today. Next question is from Michelle from Melbourne. Hey guys, love the show. I'm an expat <laughs> from London and Melbourne. Just kidding. 
Chris, I used to do Australian impressions all the time. I've lost. You got yelled at. I've lost it. Yeah, I lost it. You got it. yelled at so much about that. It's, it's wonderful. I've lost it. Uh, so Michelle from Melbourne. Hey, guys. Love the show. I've got a problem that is making me want to throw my computer through the window. I have a client who runs a few gyms. My Google ads keep getting disapproved for misleading content when they are not misleading. And then she goes on to give examples of what Google is seeing on the website in terms of different claims. That, uh, but the claims look very vanilla, like they're very straightforward. Like if you sign mm -hmm. up for the gym, you get this um, in terms of the membership. So her problem is she keeps getting ads disapproved uh, for misleading content. What do you do, Chris, when ads get disapproved for misleading content? Um, I have a very good answer for I this. I'm shocked that you wanted to answer this one. But let's well, see if you're up to the task. Oh, I'm coming I'm in hot my with a good answer after you. Just okay. know that. Okay. No pressure. Um, oh, and now I'm terrified. Well, I'm basically going to say the experience that I've had, and then I'm going to let you follow up with uh, some solid advice. So I'm going to speak to everyone except for Michelle and say, <laughs> hello, everyone. Um, the experience <laughs> the that world. Michelle is talking about is essentially something that I'm sure many of you will uh, have uh, happened to you if it hasn't already happened. And uh, here's the usual process. You're going to have to contact Google uh, support for something like this. You could try uh, the chat. They have a chat thing where you can talk to people live. You can call or you can send an email. And the, the problem is this, and this is usually what people run into, is you'll get a, uh, a, a note about a policy issue and it doesn't give you specifics. It only gives you general policy information. And what Michelle's talking about with health, anything having to do with health or personal fitness or gyms or training or weight loss or anything like that, uh, usually there's promises that are being made that can't necessarily be appropriate for everyone. You know, lose 10 pounds or, you know, live, live much healthier, you know, stuff like that. So usually the, the answer to this is to put a disclaimer, you know, uh, these people and pictures may be, well, of course, I'm not going to say it in the appropriate language, but essentially what it is saying is the people in these pictures are not necessarily uh, clients. These may be models and uh, also no, no, no. not all results are guaranteed for everyone. That's usually the disclaimer that can get you from, you know, you put that on the site somewhere and you can get you from having that issue. And from my experience, you send that over, you say, hey, it's on the page. You know, there's a disclaimer. We've removed some of these issues and you can get approval from Google. But I'm interested in Mr. I'm coming in hot. What, uh, what you have to yeah, say. So just it. like on the last episode where you gave like decent advice and then I came in with very clear, this is what you got to do. This will help you. And I asked for I a nice pint when I go over to, to England. Michelle, if I'm ever in Melbourne, you, you got to pay me back for Jason this question. Never Take me out. Jason never leaves his house. Give me a great dinner. Show me around Melbourne because this, this answer is going to help you a lot. You're on the right track, Chris. You need to contact Google. My, my preference is to call them. Just get it up. Like, just get it, get started. Call them. Let's not go back and forth on emails and chats initially, at least call them. Number one, put yourself in a very patient mindset. You, it, you just, it's going to take some time. You got to be patient. So you tell them that you're getting this disapproval in your ads and for misleading content. So what you need to do, just like Chris said, you need to probably put something on your website or remove something. But here's the difference with what I'm saying. You need to get Google to send you an email telling you exactly what needs to be added to what page or pages or mm. what needs to be removed. And you need to just get very specific instructions for them. What would you, what do we need to add to what pages? Please email that to us. Or what do we need to remove from what pages? And then they can give you their options or their advice. And then you have it in an email and you can send it to the developer of the website to the client who owns a website, whatever. And, and then they can do it. And then you can call Google back and you say, Hey, this is what you sent us. 
we did it. It's on these links now, and then they can get it approved. And that's my, my big difference with my advice is get specific instructions on what to, what you need to add or what you need to remove to overcome this misleading content, then do it. And then you can tell Google, you did exactly what they said. And then you can see if you can get your ads approved. Now that's my advice. That's my experience. That's what I do. Thank you for the question. And I've got this co-host, uh, the side guy sorry. laughing sorry. the whole time during the question. Like, I've, are you laughing at me or are you laughing at what I said in the next question? I'm, I'm, I just read your answer. Okay. All right. To the next question. I thought, no, I, thought I had something I on not... my face or something or I wasn't no. answering right, but isn't that, no. but do, we'll get to that comment and trust me, we'll, we'll break it down what I said, but Chris, mm -hmm. Do you think that's good additional advice on top of what you said that, oh, yeah. no, don't make up your own disclaimer. Tell them, get them to tell you exactly what they want you to add. And that way you don't have to go back and forth so many times. Is that that's, good that, advice? I have, that is excellent advice that I've never done. I've never been so bold to, to say, okay, great. Uh, what you just said, send it to me in email and I will get that done and we'll get approval. Bam, bam, like that. I've never approached it that way. I think that is Excellent. That is coming in hot. That is solid and heavy. That is good stuff. That is a Stanley steamer of an answer. Okay. So thank you. Yep. All right. Um, next, we're going to back to the United States. Finally, we're back here, Jason, back home. And we're going to hear from Aaron. Yes. <clears throat> Aaron from Gurney, Illinois. He says, of course, as everyone does, listens to the show, loves it, changed his life. Absolutely. He's going to name his first child uh, Chris because that's the best name. Um, he says, as for my question, I was wondering when you guys chose ch or choose to use target CPA or maximize conversions for your bidding strategy. And when you choose to just stick with manual CPC bidding. And Jason, um, I want you to read what you typed out <laughs> word for word and go. You don't want me to read that because we want to keep being able to do the show <laughs> among some other things. So yeah, I got pretty fired up on this one, Aaron. Um, so just in terms of target CPA or max or maximize conversions versus manual bidding, when do I stick with manual bidding? Always, always do manual bidding. That's always my default. That's what I do probably 90% of the time. I Here's my rule of thumb. When do I go automated bidding? It's when I'm having an issue and manual bidding isn't getting the job done. Let me give you an example. I just built out. No, 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 no. I didn't just build it out. It's been a couple months now of a client in a small area. There's low population. And because there's low population for this topic, also low search volume for this topic, I did not expect it to be this slow. And we're not spending the full budget consistently. And then when we do, our cost per click is insane because I've bid it up so high trying to get that volume. So when a click does come in, it's just way more than I wanna be paying. So in this situation, I am not having success with manual bidding. So now I'm going to try maximize clicks or something like that because I didn't have success with manual bidding. So I'm going to try it out. But most of the time I like manual bidding because I like full control. I like being able to bid different things for different keywords that get different conversion rates, that diff get different cost per conversions and be in total control. It works for me. That's what I do. But when will I use automated bidding? It's when I'm struggling with manual bidding. I use it as a backup option to try something new. That is my outlook on bidding these days. Mm. That's okay. So <clears throat> it's a great question because Isn't I, I think that it's reasonable? A very, Isn't that reasonable? Oh yeah, I think so. And I, I it's wanna, not ideal, ideologic, ideal, 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 ideologist. <laughs> it's not. It's not ideological. 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 Is that it? <laughs> I'm not a zealot. Is what I meant to say. There we go. I'm not okay. subscribing to a certain ideology, manual there versus automated. I'm not making uh, one seem, or, or I'm not saying one is worse than the other. I'm just saying 
Manual works for me. I like it. I prefer it, but I'm not opposed to automated. I do it when manual doesn't work for me in those 10% search situations. That's what works yeah. for me. But yeah. whatever works for people, work, you know, do what works. You know? That's my outlook. I would, I would say, just to, to, to put a contrast on it, um, if Jason does it maybe 10% of the time, I maybe do it 20%. So I'm basically with Jason, except I don't necessarily do it if something isn't working. I actually, most of the time I tend to use it is when things are going really well. Um, and Why? I think, Why well, would you do that if things are going, are you kidding me? I said, again? No, 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 I'm not. No, no, listen, listen, experiment. I set up an experiment and I'll think, can this trim off another 10, 20% off of the cost per acquisition? And Sometimes it works really well. Sometimes it fails awful and I end it and it's over and I break okay. up with it forever. Other times it works. And uh, let me say as well, he also mentioned in his question, maximize, uh, maximize clicks. I believe you mentioned uh, basically aut automation of other kinds. And I do like maximize clicks if I'm working with a client that has no way of um, uh, controlling conversion tracking you know they they just don't have a system maybe they're delivering everything through a third party system their crm does not have a system that can push that information back into google ads um and um yeah i mean then that that's going to be a system where i rely entirely on quality of traffic bounce rate time on site search terms uh, click through rate and, you, and, you, all of that is and you and you would rather have max clicks bidding on there than beautiful manual and you could go oh what was my absolute top impression share oh it was 99 percent and so i want to lower bids and see if i can sp still spend the full budget and get more clicks overall the beauty of manual bids you you prefer having t uh maximize where you don't even have that option if the experiment that I set up <clears throat> can get me more clicks at a lower CPC and still maintain those metrics, uh, yeah, I'll do it. Now, keep in mind, I, do, I never go straight cold turkey from manual to maximize clicks, conversions, mm -hmm. CPA, whatever. <clears throat> I don't do that because that's just asking for a, a total destruction because you see a man cry, you spend, you know, six months working on manual bidding, you change it to maximize clicks, <laughs> it fails in the first month, and then you change it back and all of your bids are changed. You, you lost can't everything. go back to what you did before. You lost everything. Now, absolutely. So that's a big disclaimer there. Don't, don't go cold turkey. Don't wipe everything out completely. All right. Hey, we, we can still be friends. Look, I'm not, don't, don't act like I'm disgusting to you. Tell me I'm beautiful. I tell you all the time, you're freaking hot, dude. You, 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 you are, and it's, it's a kind of uh, attractiveness that it's not like, oh, he's going to walk down a runway kind of attractiveness, unless it's like for a denim line or something like that. Like I can see you in a denim vest with denim jeans, square <laughs> denim line model. dancing or whatever. <laughs> um, but you you have a great business you have a great business Thank look you. dude i you, it's you have such a good bit look for business it's amazing you look wow. like a stock image in real life that, that is the best <laughs> <laughs> that is the best compliment i've ever heard well if there was That's a freeze amazing. frame of you like leaning over <laughs> someone's shoulder or like sticking your hand to shake the hand to make the deal or reviewing a contract or something like that and like a stock image or just like looking at digital ads on the internet or on the computer, you look like a stock image in real life. It's amazing. Wow. That's, that's a really, Congratulations. that's a really funny answer. And what I, the, the funniest it. part about it is, you know, I'm not wrong. Like you look know. at other people I, I, and then you look in the self, mirror and you're like, I am better looking than most people. <laughs> Self-reflection is not something I do well on. So I have no idea if it's true or not, but my wife, says that I'm average and uh, there's not a whole lot of men that are better looking than me. So that's, that's all I need. You know, that's all I need. Jason, let's get back in our boat and cross the country, uh, across the ocean okay. and across the world to go to somewhere. All right. But first what happened to America? Where are my American questions, Chris? We hey, had like one um, out of like 20 or two. I, I didn't feel like we were representing well enough with our international uh, listeners, which we have a lot of. A lot. We have a lot. All over yeah. the world. Don't get that twisted oh, name, yeah. buddy. All over the world. It's All amazing. over the world. We're, we're going to answer a question from Ivan 
from Croatia. I'm so unfamiliar with where Croatia is and exactly what's there that I don't even know. How do you say the name of that city? I don't I even know. Zagreb. Zagreb? Zagreb. Zagreb. Do I have to roll my R? Is that a thing they do? <laughs> I don't even know. If you want to. <laughs> <laughs> don't even know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call it Zagreb. Um, okay. Ivan. He says, hi, guys. First things first, I love your show. I listen to it every day while driving from work. Really makes the commute something to look forward to. Um, so he basically discusses how he's very new to Google mm. Ads, only been doing it for six months. Um, first of all, Ivan, you found a great resource. You're going to be a great manager by the time you get through our 200 episodes. So congrats on that. <clears throat> he basically says, since I'm only starting out and I don't have much experience or expertise in Google Ads, uh, is a viable freelancer career option for someone like me possible as a beginner getting straight to the meat here does he and, have yeah, and you didn't want to do this on patreon where we talk about the business of ppc it's a great opportunity to advertise um the about month. the patreon this is the kind of stuff you would get what if we gave them a sample jason a taste it's christmas jason <laughs> thanksgiving's over okay. it's christmas okay so I don't know. It's a big question, Chris. It's a big question. I want to get your thoughts on it too. Um, the, the BS answer is, Oh, it's great. It's going to be great forever. Jump on in the water's yeah. nice. No, like a lot of people online would say that I bet, but uh, I'll just be honest with you and give you my thoughts on it. Uh, I, here's the thing. The situation is, the water's nice right now, but there might be sharks in it. That's basically the way I look at it. There's a lot of money to be made right now, but there's threats on the horizon. There's sharks in the water. One of the threats is the technology. And I know there's people that say, oh, there's always going to be need for a human, all this kind of stuff. But that's not that you don't know that. And I'll give you an example. I'm not even going to name the program, but there's going to be certain if, if more and more parts of digital marketing just become business owner gets on the computer, flips the light switch and turns on the campaign and there's nothing to do or no controls available to the advertiser mm -hmm. like there are today, then what are we going to do? There's a, there's nothing to do. So if it goes down that road, that's a threat. And there are signs that it goes down that road to some extent. The other threat is people. Uh, right now, this is the Wild West. There's a lot of pathetic, criminal, uh, disgusting people in this industry, Chris. And I'm being yep, real about that. True. There's there's people yeah. in this industry that are just horrible people. And they jump around from hot industry to hot industry to hot industry. And then they fail because they're horrible people. And they jump to the next one. The reason why is because there's not a lot of qual There's not a lot of uh, barriers to entry right now. If you wanted to become uh, accounting, and do someone's taxes. You have to become a certified public accountant licensed by a state. A state has requirements. You have to go to school and basically go for five years. You have to take a test, all that kind of stuff. If you want to say, I'm going to manage your ad account on a digital marketing platform, you just say it. And so there's a lot of, there's just a lot of not good people in the industry. Now that's a two edged sword because, because there's not good people in the industry, it makes good people shine. And people flock mm -hmm. to them. And so there's a lot of opportunity. But if more and more people get into this industry, if more and more people get good, um, there's just going to be more competition and the profits are going to be narrowed. And there's just going to be idiots out there going, oh, for $21 an hour, I'll make your campaign great and all this kind of stuff. So those are my two threats, the technology and also the amount of people getting into it. That said, that's not happening tomorrow to the extent that it's undoable as a business or a career. But the way I always look at it, Chris, is I know that any moment in five years from that moment, this career might not exist and I might have to do something else and I'm going to prepare for that moment. That may be overly paranoid. It may be under paranoid, but that's how I think of it. I just know at any time, and I say five years, and to be honest with you, dude, I'll be straight up honest with you. I look at it like every freaking day everything could go away the next day in this 
opportunity of a career might not exist. Now I might go for 25 years and the end never happened. And it was just a great career, like a accounting career. Like you just know you're going to have work for 25 years, but I don't look at it that way. I look at it. It's so fluid. Uh, things could change anytime. So do you want to jump into that as someone new? It's up to you, but those are the, that's the way someone who's very established still thinks about it. Yeah. Ivan, I, Jason, I thought that was, it's a great answer. It's are you as truth. negative as me or do you just, or um, you are and you don't think about it? You don't care. That's how I think about it. I, I set myself up correct. I know it could all go away and I'm, I'm okay with that. So I don't really worry about it, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, I don't think that it will completely go away within any short amount of time. I think um, I think it'll stick around for a while, but the 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 control and the size of the the search market may not be as strong after a certain amount of time. Just like billboards are still relevant, there's still things that people buy. People buy magazine ads, but it's not as you know it's it's not as familiar. Uh, it's it's not as the first thing people think about. But there are still people that need that because that is the best place for people to see certain things. Um, right. So I think that there will be an industry. I would say, you know, I'd say there's probably going to be an industry for 25 years. I would say there's going to be something like that, but I don't think it will resemble the dominance and the percentage of spend that it has had all this time. I don't think it will continue to grow forever, um, but I still think it'll be a viable solution for a lot of people. Um, I mean, pending any type of major uh, international political stuff, you know, having to do with Google and stuff like that. I mean, things like that can throw a monkey wrench into it and, and change things significantly, breaking things up, you know, and making it difficult for, for the search industry. Google adds to maintain, you know, its dominance. Um, but uh, apart from that, no, I think it'll always, always be a place. And so Ivan, I think you should if you like it, if it's fun, if you enjoy it, if you're good at it and you're having success, absolutely jump in. I mean, there are, why would we even do this show if we think that there's no value? Why would we do the Patreon, which we're about, we're about to do, where we talk about agencies, business owners, freelancers who want to do this and do it as a career? We wouldn't do it if we thought it was an, a, a, a worthless thing to get started on today. I know, but I'm just a paranoid entrepreneur and that's the way you got to be. Yeah. And I'm a, oh, no, I have I, dark I, thoughts, you know, yeah. I prepare. I like it. No, that, and that, and that, that's, that's why I like our relationship. Well, you know what so I would honestly advice we, I would, I would give a, a child of mine. I would be like, look, if listen to the market, if there's money to be made, go make money, but don't have this, uh, don't, <laughs> but that's don't have I'd this, but don't have this idea that you're guaranteed to make money doing this for 30 years. Like that's not the world we live in right now yeah. anymore no so no i'd say just listen to the market if you're able to get clients and make money and you like doing it do it but you're in the technology space you're in uh it's very fluid you know what i'm saying so yeah um that's the way i think about it all right well um you right you guys ready to hear a secret weapon opteo.com slash psp it's a secret weapon it's a secret weapon you need to get things done in Google ads. You have the Google ads interface, right? Everybody knows it. They changed it. And now it's completely different. And now you know that new one and it has the same kind of stuff, but now you can use optio.com slash PSP to see a new light on the same data. Colors. You like colors? They've got colors. You like graphs? You like email alerts? You like, Hey, Hey, something's wrong. Red alert, red flag. They got that. They've got lots of great tools to help your life be a little bit easier. And isn't that worth trying out for six weeks for free? I think it is. You should try it out. OPTEO.com slash PSP. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. And I want to thank Directive Consulting. Directive Consulting offers online marketing, SEO, pay-per-click, conversion rate optimization, social media marketing, content marketing landing pages and they specialize in enterprise and b2b campaigns if you're an enterprise advertiser out there if you're a b2b advertiser out there 
I know you've had multiple agencies that you work with, maybe freelancers. You've been frustrated with accountability, lack thereof. You've been frustrated with the communication, lack thereof. Directive is different. Directive delivers. Directiveconsulting.com. Get a free custom proposal. Directiveconsulting.com. Jason, it's time to say goodbye uh, and then say hello again in Patreon because that's what we're going to do. We have another question. We have a great question. Jason, and guess where it's from? It's not the United States. That's right. It's from the UK. If you are in the UK, you sent a question. It might be your question. Join us, paidsearch.com. Paidsearch.com? What are you doing? I am sorry, Jason. It's been a long time. Paidsearchpodcast.com. Thank oh, you. you've talked for an hour. It's been a long day. Paidsearchpodcast.com. There's a little picture that says Patreon. Click Thank it. You. Sign up. $2 a month, 50 cents a show. I should slap myself every time I remind myself about that pricing. <laughs> Get it while it's hot. 25 we'll cents s- each, Jason. 25 cents <laughs> 25 each. 25 cents each. <laughs> Drinks on me. All right. All right. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next week.